Good evening, everyone. It's Dr. Shiva Yadure. As I promised you yesterday, as our part of our policy to biology series, I'm going to be doing a deeper dive to share with you why there are medical uh, medicine shortages and all sorts of supply shortages in U.S. hospitals. As I shared yesterday, these uh, shortages have, it's not something new, it's been going on for decades, in fact. And what we discussed yesterday was we gave you sort of the overview of why this is occurring um, because of the collusion that takes place between insurance companies and GPOs and uh, group purchasing organizations, which we're gonna talk about, or pharmacy manager brokers, which occurs on the pharmacy level. But I promised you that I'd walk you through step by step how these uh, collusions took place so you get a deeper understanding of why healthcare costs are high. As I discussed yesterday, the reality is it's not that uh, uh, insurance companies randomly charge their costs or their charges to you and why insurance costs are high. The reason insurance costs are high, you're going to realize, is because the insurance companies over the last uh, 50 years have built a very close collusion with organizations called group purchasing organizations and on the other side called GPOs or pharmacy manager brokers, PBMs, okay? Sorry, uh, pharmacy broker managers. And, and we're gonna focus today on the GPOs because the same idea follows through on the pharmacies. And I'm gonna walk you through using the whiteboard here and analysis. So let's begin, first of all, by looking at different hospitals. So if we look at a hospital here, and let's assume there's different hospitals. Um, you know, there were uh, hospitals uh, which were independent hospitals at one time. They weren't part of large conglomerates. So let's say you had a hospital here. I'm just going to use this to denote a hospital. Let's say H1 Hospital 1. And let's say there's another hospital here. And let's call this H2. And then there's another hospital here, H3. Okay? So there's three different hospitals. And you can have go all the way to H and Okay, and different hospitals. So these hospitals need supplies. So let's walk over here and let's put this little cloud here of different supplies. So hospitals need to buy supplies, right? And this supplies could include things like insulin, right? If someone's rushed to a hospital, they need insulin. It could involve cancer drugs, right? People are in late stage cancer, they didn't take care of their bodies or whatever happened, they have cancer drugs. It could be um, saline, right? you know, bags of saline, all the way down to, you know, things like catheters, right? Everything you see in a hospital has to be bought from different suppliers. And there's various companies who have these supplies. So let's take hospital one and there's an administrator here and they have to buy insulin, all right? So they will negotiate a price with the insulin company. Maybe they need a hundred insulin bags and they'll say, and they'll negotiate a price of $10 per bag of insulin, okay? And they'll have to do this individually. Another hospital would also go to the supplier and they say, look, I'm gonna pay you, and they negotiate a price of $2 a bag, okay? Because they're, maybe they're gonna buy, you know, um, uh, 200 units. And then another hospital will go to the same insulin company, maybe they're gonna buy 10,000 units, and maybe they negotiate a price of $5 a bag, okay? So what you see here is each of these hospitals have negotiated individual prices with these insulin companies. So what ended up happening uh, as this was occurring around in the 70s, um, these hospitals said, why don't we get together and, and buy together bags of, or, or, or in this case, uh, 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 insulin bags directly uh, from the supplier together. So in order to do that, what these hospitals did was they brought in a, a broker and the broker was called a GPO, okay? So what was a GPO? A GPO was a group purchasing organization. It was like an agent, okay? And this agent, GPO for short, and what these hospitals would do is they would go to this agent and they say, hey, look, we need 100 bags, hospital one. Hospital two said, we need 
200 bags. And hospital three said, you know, we need whatever, let's say 300 bags, okay? So the total, this guy, the GPO was gonna purchase from this person was uh, 500 bags of insulin, okay? And in return, the insulin price was set at, let's say, you know, uh, $8 a bag, okay? So these guys each had to essentially pay $8 a bag for that insulin. $8 a bag, $8 a bag, and $8 a bag, okay? So this is a pretty good deal, right? Because before, this guy was paying a lot more. So they pooled their needs to th this supplier. So bottom line, the GPO um, served as their middleman going, and he did this across the board for those cancer drugs or saline or catheters, okay? So this GPO became the single agent getting whatever supplies the hospitals needed um, from suppliers. Now, these suppliers over here could be, you know, drug companies. Big Pharma could be over here or a small pharma company, right? It could be, you know, uh, manufacturer X, manufacturer Y, or manufacturer Z. These are all different companies who make this. And the, the GPO would sign agreements with these people, um, long-term agreements, short-term agreements, and these were contracts, right? So these contracts were signed, and the GPO actually owned the relationships over time with these people. So think about what I'm saying. As GPOs grew between you know, this period over the last 30 years, initially they were servicing the hospitals here, right? They were helping the hospitals get a lower rate. But now think about what happened over time. Over time, the GPOs controlling the supply of nearly every item, bedpans, pillowcases, sheets, um, drugs, uh, you know, ventilators, everything you can imagine um, is coming from these suppliers into the hospitals. In fact, the GPO could build, um, if there was a supplier here, and there could be, let's say, uh, uh, Z1, Z2, so on, Z5 suppliers who all do insulin. And the GPO could do preferential deals maybe with Z5. Not only was he going to give him a better deal, but maybe um, the guy uh, was going to take him on a vacation, right? All sorts of backroom deals started occurring. And after a certain point, around the 2000 period, so this, this started in 1980, so around 2000s, these GPOs sort of flipped the game. They went to the hospitals and they said, look, we're getting you great prices. Do you really need to get such discounts? And what ended up happening was the GPOs started dictating price and supply to the hospitals. So they would tell the hospitals, look, um, I can get you this bag of insulin, not for eight bucks, but how about you pay, you know, 10 bucks, you're still better off or nine bucks, right? So they started dictating price because they controlled all of these relationships. So the GPOs would tell the hospitals what to do. In fact, in every hospital is a person who's running the hospital the president of the hospital, right? President one, right? Person here, person here, right? These people. The GPO would give kickbacks to the president for accepting the price that they were saying. This could be, you know, uh, hot special hotels, vacations, okay? So literally the GPO was buying the hospital administrators, essentially corruption, so they would accept the price that they were giving. It was a little bit less than what they would pay, obviously, if they had to do it individually, but it wasn't the great pricing that they were getting before. But fundamentally, the GPO could control supply. And if you remember basic macroeconomics, he who controls supply controls price, okay? Now, how does this fit into the high cost of healthcare? As I mentioned, as you look at this, the key thing uh, relative to today's topic is you can see that GPOs are controlling supply from multiple 
um, suppliers into hospitals. Today, there are only three major GPOs, three, remember that number, three major GPOs. And what has occurred over the last three to four years, and I talked about this back in uh, 2016, Jesus, 20, 20, 2017, six years ago, is that these three GPOs have connected with the three major insurance companies. So the three ma connected, meaning the three major insurance companies have now bought, let me put it like this, the three insurance companies, okay? The three GPOs now own the three GPOs. What does that mean? Let's think about that now. What does that mean? So here you have the group purchasing organizations who are essentially in a monopolistic way controlling the flow of every supply that comes into every hospital. Think about what that means. You go into a hospital and everything, God forbid you go into a hospital, no one should have to go there. Uh, but if you do, everything that you see in that hospital, the pillowcases, the bedpans, the insulin, the drugs, the saline, the catheters, all of that are typically coming from one GPO into that hospital. All right. Now, what is the interconnection between a GPO and an insurance company? Let's think about this. So an insurance company, and if you're the individual here, you're the patient here, the insurance company, what's your relationship? You pay the insurance company some dollar per month. This is called your premium, okay? Um, some people, you know, I'm, I'm paying like 800 bucks a month, okay? All right. So your, your, your insurance to the insurance company is 800 bucks a month. All right. Let's say that's what it is in 2023. In 2024, they may want to raise this to 900 bucks a month, right? Now, when they do that, how are they able to justify that? Why is it we keep paying insurance? Because the insurance companies have to um, uh, work on what's called fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Why do you buy insurance? It's the IBM selling model. Oh my God, something could happen. Oh my God, the price could be so high. And this is key. The insurance companies profit and scare you into justifying their higher premium by telling you, you know, hey, John, hey, Bob, the price could be very high tomorrow. You know, for if you, God forbid, get into a hospital, oh my God, you know, the price of the cancer drugs, the price of the insulin, the price of the saline, these things are going up. If you don't have insurance, you're going to have to pay for this out of pocket. And you go, oh my God, let me pay. I'm willing to pay you 900 bucks a month next year. In order to do this, the insurance companies, three of the major insurance companies now bought three of the major GPOs. What does that mean? That means there they can go to the gpos and there's a nudge nudge wink wink their own part of their uh, companies because insurance companies and gpos have merged the gpos now are incentivized to keep the price high because that's how they make more profit if they go to a hospital and say well the insulin bag is 50 bucks the guy says oh wow it's 50 bucks right he's getting a kickback the gpos are getting a percentage of that sale that's how they make money gpos are making a piece of this sale so they're controlling the supply. The GPOs also are incentivized to go to a hospital administrator and say, hey, look, the price is now 90 bucks and you know the supply is gonna be really tight. So the hospital administrator pays the GPO more money. So the game between the GPOs and the hospital administrators keeps the price high. The high price of all of these supplies is what the insurance companies use to make you say, oh my God, I'm, I'm willing to pay higher for, for the premium. God forbid I go to a hospital, the price is gonna be so high. So what is really happening here is when you go into one of these hospitals, right? The visit to that hospital is high, as I talked about yesterday, because everything coming into that hospital is high. Everything coming into that hospital is high because of the GPOs and the insurance linkage. So the GPOs and the three major, sorry, the insurance company, the three major GPOs are in a tight bond where the goal is to jack up price. And when you jack up price, 
you can charge more for the insurance premium, okay? Because the more the prices of the hospital supplies, right? And, and how do you get price high? Well, you need shortages. You need to, you, more shortages, you get more increase in price. That's basic macroeconomics. So I hope this helps you understand that there was a time, you know, as we go back here, that hospitals would buy direct, right? And this was a model that hospitals were doing. It's very inefficient. Prices were high, but they could control their own destiny. And now when they brought these middlemen in, as we go here, when hospital presidents, the bean counters, did these relationship with the GPOs, it worked well initially, but the GPOs flipped it, as I talked about. They started controlling, dictating. They started dictating to the hospitals what to do. The presidents were paid off through these kickbacks and the entire process was flipped on its head and a, a few set of people, few um, GPOs, there's a monopoly, control the entire supply as well as the price into hospitals, high price, insurance companies um, uh, can demand more premium. Now tomorrow, we're gonna talk about as president, Schiffer for president, what I will do to bust all this up. To give you a couple of hints, obviously, this link is a problem, insurance companies and GPOs in this cahoots. That's, that's a serious problem. And the other big problem you can see here is that the entire relationship between these hospital presidents and the kickbacks that they get is also problematic. But that's what we'll talk about tomorrow. But in closing, the main thing you should leave away with is that group purchasing organizations are controlling the supply of everything from suppliers into hospitals. There's an incentive here for them to create shortages. And with those shortages, they can decide which suppliers they want to work with. Because on the back end, these suppliers are doing back end deals with GPOs. And by the way, no one can get access to these contracts that they have. So a couple of days ago, the FDA um, allowed unapproved cancer drugs coming from China. So China is also over here to supply cancer drugs through GPOs to a hospital. Now, why was this? Who created the shortage of U.S. cancer drugs? So there are U.S. manufacturers here. They're not able to, for some reason, give enough cancer drugs. And so um, the, the GPOs went to uh, uh, Chinese companies and they got the FDA to bring that in because of this urgency. Oh my God, we don't have enough cancer drugs. So the level of corruption that's going on the back end um, and the opacity of it, which means there's very little transparency is what's allowing all these shenanigans to take place. But anyway, tomorrow we'll finish our series on why are there uh, uh, medicine shortages in the United States by looking at how we break this up. And that'll give you details on my policy uh, for healthcare for really reducing costs to increase quality. Thank you everyone. Thank, thank you everyone. I hope this helped. Thank you.